Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on reflection and mirrors. The topic of this video is image formation by plane mirrors. And we want to know what is an image and how and why is an image formed by a plane or flat mirror. I'm Mr. H. Let's get started. In a previous video, this one, I discussed the law of reflection. One part of that video emphasized the importance of the line of sight. The idea is that if you want to view the image of an object, you have to sight along a line at the location where the image is at. And when you do, a ray of light will reflect off the mirror towards your eye along that line of sight. The light originates at the object location, approaches the mirror, and reflects at the location where your line of sight intersects with the mirror. For these three observers that you see in the diagram, each one is sighting along a different line, but at the same image location. And each one will see the image because they're sighting along a line that intersects at that image location. Now, what we know is that the image is located at the location in space where it would seem to all three of these observers and any other observer as though the reflected light is coming from. The following classroom demonstration is useful for locating the image of an object. You need four things to do it. You need a four foot tall by one foot wide mirror, the kind that you'd find down at a big box store for five to six bucks. I place it on a table in the front of the room sideways so that it's one foot tall and four feet wide. You need a classroom full of students. That's not hard to find. And finally, you need two graduated cylinders. One liter graduated cylinders, the kind you might steal from the chemistry department at your school. I take one of those graduated cylinders and I put it in front of the mirror so that the students can see it and when they look in the mirror the classroom of observers can see the image of that cylinder. I take a second cylinder identical to the first and I prop it down behind the mirror on the table. Then I ask Noah, hey Noah, I'm going to move this cylinder until it's in line with the image of the cylinder that you see in the mirror. So focus on the image of that cylinder in the mirror and when I move the second cylinder such that it extends above the mirror and in line with the image, you tell me to stop. And so I begin to move the cylinder closer and closer and closer until Noah finally says, hey, stop. And it's at that point that I found, the Im I found the line of sight for Noah at the image location. Now I look on the opposite side of the room and I say, Anna, is the image lined up for you? And you know what Anna's going to say. No, it's not lined up for me. So I say, Anna, I'm going to continue to move this image until it's lined up for you. But I have to make sure I don't mess it up for Noah. So I move it diagonally towards Noah, but closer to in line with where Anna's looking to see the image in the mirror. And eventually Anna says, stop. And it's at that point I know, I've, I know I've found Anna's line of sight. And since Anna and Noah are on the two extremes of the classroom, I have found the location of the image for every observer in the room. The cylinder, number two, is located at the image location. The location in space where it seems to Anna and it seems to Noah as though the light is coming from. And it also seems to every observer in that classroom. I have found the image location. And then I make a measurement from the mirror to the object and from the mirror to the image. And I learn that that image is as far behind the mirror as the object is in front of the mirror. In other words, the distance from the object to the mirror is equal to the distance from the image to the mirror. If we ask what is an image, a trip to the dictionary would be a good starting place. We would find that an image is a representation or replica of an object. It has the likeness of an object. I like to add to this that sometimes an image is nothing at all. In other words, other than this, there's nothing physically present at the image location. But we can define the image location as the one location in space where it seems to every observer as though the reflected light is coming from. Here is an object in a mirror. When you turn the light bulb on, light's given off in all sorts of directions. Some of the light hits the mirror, and then it reflects according to the law of reflection. And if you took one of the reflected rays, or all of them, and extended them backwards, they would intersect at the location where the image is located. In other words, an observer looking at this light bulb would have to look along a line of sight that extends backwards along the line of the reflected ray to the image location. So I like to say that each observer would be looking along a different line of sight at the same image location. For plain mirrors, that image location is behind the mirror and as far behind it as the object is in front of the mirror. This image is what I refer to as the one location in space where it seems to every observer as though the reflected light is coming from. And when you look at that location, you see a likeness or representation of the object. Here we have three students 
an object, a mirror, and of course an image is formed, and we see that there. In order for these three students to see the image, they must sight along a line at the image location. And when they do, a ray of light will come along that line to their eye. For instance, if we consider student one, when looking along this line of sight, a ray of light coming from the object will bounce off the mirror and reflect a student one's eye. For student two, we can say the same thing. A ray of light starting from the object reflects off the mirror to student two's eye. And the same is true for student three. In order to see an object, you must look along the line of sight at the image of that object. Now what about student four? Can student four see the image? And the answer is no, because when student four lines the line of sight up with the image location, it doesn't intersect with the mirror. The mirror's not wide enough for student four to see the image. Light from the object doesn't reflect off the mirror and come to the eye of student four. So let's summarize how an image is formed by the reflection of light. An image is formed because light emanates from an object in a variety of directions. Now some of the light that comes from the object actually hits the mirror. And if it does, it will reflect off the mirror according to the law of reflection. And each ray can be extended backwards behind the mirror where it intersects at a point, a point known as the image location. Any person positioned along the line of a reflected ray can look along that line and can sight backwards to view the image of the object. It's at this time in every video that I like to help you out with an action plan, a series of next steps for making the learning stick. But before I help you out, could you help us out by giving us a like, subscribing to the channel, or leaving a question or comment in the comment section below. Now for your action plan. Here's three resources that you can find on our website. I've left links to each of the three in the description section of this video. We have a simulation page, a Minds on Physics mission, and a tutorial page. Any one of these would help make the learning stick. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck. I'm Mr. H, and thanks for watching.